Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with the first of another multi-part After Effects tutorial. I'm calling this one uh, Desecrated Cathedral. And in this, I'll be taking this um, excellent photograph by a lady called Mercedes Ramirez Guerrero. Um, took this off her Flickr page because she's very kindly set it up under the Creative Commons license. And we'll be turning into something altogether spookier. Now, as you can see, there's a ton of stuff happening here. We've got rain, we've got lightning, we've got hellish clouds, and we've even got some live action footage. I've also created a pseudo 3D effect with uh, depth of field and uh, the glowing windows with a uh, kind of candlelight flicker. So that's what we're aiming for. Let's get started. First thing you want to do is take your image. Now this can be any image, but a couple of guidelines here. Obviously you're looking for a building with windows front facing, but you also want a fairly clean skyline like we've got here. Now I've already set this image up to be the destination size of our final After Effects project. So we're looking at 1024 by 576. That's widescreen PAL square pixels. So um, the image itself needs a little bit of tweaking before we can uh, get it ready for After Effects. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just get the marquee tool and select the image. Hit Control and T to bring up the transform properties. And we're just gonna enlarge it holding down shift and dragging the corner um, markers of the marquee tool just to bring it out to about the size we want. Now I'm hoping to uh, cut out the, uh, the bush that's coming in the side just to give us a clear uninterrupted skyline. Now another thing about this is it's slightly skewed and we just want to uh, rotate it by a couple of degrees just to level up the building so it's upright. Okay that looks uh, almost ready. Just um, Take it out a little bit further. Okay, that's perfect. So hit enter to commit your changes. Now the next thing we need to do is remove the sky and the simplest way to do that is to use the uh, magic wand tool. I've set it up with a tolerance of 75, but obviously your results may vary depending on how much sky and how much variation of color there is. So um, that gives us a pretty good result off the bat. You may just want to uh, tidy it up a little bit Okay, hit the Refine Edge button. And we'll just increase the Smart Radius by about two pixels. And we will feather it by another two pixels. And just OK that. So when I hit Delete now, you should get a fairly clean transparent sky. You just deselect that so you can see the end result. Okay, so uh, next thing, you can save that as a PSD file. Call it Spooky Church and uh, save it as a PSD. Okay, so that's all we need to do with Photoshop, so I'll close that down. Double click in the uh, project panel and import your spooky church. Now we're going to import it as a composition. And double click just to bring it up. So there it is. Just going to hit Control and K. As you can see, our project settings are uh, as I set them up, which is uh, 1024 by 576, 25 frames per second. And we actually want to drop it down to 10 seconds long, because that's long enough. Okay, if I just uh, pop a new solid behind it, we'll call this clouds. You'll see that we've completely removed the skyline. Okay, so the first step is to uh, create the hellish looking clouds traveling across the sky. And the way we do that is with our old favorite, the fractal noise. So find the fractal noise effect in your effects and presets panel and drag it onto your clouds layer. I'm just going to hide the visibility of the photo for now so we can see what we're doing better. Okay, so I'm going to change the fractal type from basic to dynamic progressive. I'm going to change the noise type to spline and I'm going to hit invert and that gives us that kind of diaphanous look. Ramp the contrast up to 300 and just increase the brightness by about 10. Now increase the uh, complexity 
to 8. See how that looks. Okay, that's good, but it's not moving. So uh, with the timeline indicator at the beginning of your timeline, twill down the transform, check the stopwatch um, for offset turbulence to create a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline, drag the timeline indicator to the end, grab the anchor point, and pull it up to the top of the screen. And that gives us uh, our moving clouds effect. Now we also need to change the evolution settings. So again, timeline indicator at the beginning of the timeline. Check the stopwatch for evolution. Timeline indicator towards the end. And give it a value of one revolution. However, it's not quite right. It's, uh, it's moving in the right direction, but it's traveling upwards too much. So I just want to give it that look of a, uh, a layer of cloud moving from behind the building and forwards. So I'm just going to turn it into a 3D layer and hit R to bring up the rotation values. I'm going to move the X rotation up to a value about 45 so that tilts it forward. Y rotation of about minus 9 and Z rotation of about minus 11. Now if I hold down Shift and hit cursor up it'll nudge it upwards and then tap the S key to bring up the scale value and just enlarge it until it fills the area we want it to fill. Okay, so that looks a lot more like clouds traveling across the sky. So the next thing I'm going to do is just reposition the photo layer because it's sitting a bit high. We want to give it a little bit more sky to play with. So uh, with the layer selected, hold down Shift and tap the down cursor key just to give yourself a little bit more space. Just do the same with the clouds layer because we've uh, exposed a bit of black. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Next thing to do, in the effects and presets panel, type CC toner and drag that onto your clouds layer. Ironically, the default values actually seem to match this quite well, but it's not the look we're going for. We actually want to take it from this uh, crappy brown to a much colder blue, bluish gray. Okay, that's good. And what you can now do is hit Control C to copy that effect and just paste it onto your photo layer just to match them up. Okay, now the photo layer is looking a little bit flat. Um, so what I want to do now is create a new adjustment layer. Type in curves into your effects and presets panel. Drag that onto your adjustment layer. And we're going to create a nice S curve just to give it that uh, high light and low light boost. Okay, I think the mid-tones are a little bit uh, deep on the uh, photo layer, so I'm just going to take the mid-tone value and brighten it up a bit. Okay, that's good. Next thing we want to do is create some rain. So uh, right-click, select New Adjustment Layer, and we'll rename it, we'll call it Rain. Find the CC Rain effect in your Effects and Presets panel and drag it onto your Adjustment Layer. And you can see it drops in this nice rain effect. I just want to play around with that a little bit. I'm going to increase the amount because it's a very stormy night. So take it up to 500. Increase the speed to 1.5. Now the clouds are traveling from left to right. So we want the uh, angle of the rain to look as if it matches that. So we're going to take it from 10, probably all the way up to about 50 degrees. It's a very stormy night. Increase the angle variation to 35. And we'll ramp up the drop size to 3, just to make it a little bit more visible. And we'll leave everything else the way it is. Okay, so that's our building, our clouds, and our rain. Um, I think that's about all I can fit into the 10 minute YouTube time limit for now. So um, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. Stick around for part 2 coming soon. Thanks for watching.